No, do not call me anymore. It's none of my business. How am I supposed to record a lecture for the students now? Feeling completely broken. Oh shit, it's only Thursday. I borrowed it from Stephen. Uh, since Alice died, Stephen is the only person I trust. Take my pills. Fuck. Where are my meds? <sighs> All right. Now I can go get the camera. This place is starting to look like a garbage dump, rather than a storage room. Well, I hope I won't forget to press the record button this time. Repairs, repairs. Let's move on straight to our deceased. I'm wondering how the new tripod is going to work. and... Oh, this should be fine. November 21st, 1991. Time, 8.43 p.m. Recording for medical students from the University of Missouri. Well, who do we have here today? Mention the rookie mistakes. Uh... Oh yeah, that's right. That's my Orin to sensify you for a few issues. First, Due to the fact that in the process of revealing and securing for found on the outskirts of a parking lot near a gas station, where he often begged and insistently offered to clean the windows of cars that were leaving the station, the body was found in a dry field drain. A frequent cause of dramatic deaths among the elderly is the various types of accidents, including traffic accidents or falling down the stairs. The body was spotted by a station worker during the morning shift. At first, he thought that someone had thrown rain boots and a coat in a nearby ditch. It took him a moment to recognize a human body laying on its back. Signs of libation could be found around the dead body. Empty bottles, traces of an inept attempt to start a fire, and a scattered makeshift blanket. The deceased is locally known as Old Toby. Homeless and unemployed for at least a couple years. He had gotten into fights and had been bullied by the problematic youth of the town. He was that type of a man who never kept up alcohol, which caused him to be homeless. As a young man working in a suburban coal mine most of his life, he already abused alcohol, and as the time went by, he'd fall into addiction more. Oh, that's interesting. Although alcohol poisoning as a sole cause of death among the elderly people is relatively rare, different levels of alcohol poisoning happen among one in four deaths of elderly people, which may suggest that alcohol abuse is a significant issue in this age group. What is important to note, even though alcohol poisoning does not cause death, it does increase the risk of accidents and their following injuries. The body was found at 7 o'clock by Sheriff Matthew Thompson. White male, 76 kilograms, 5 foot 8, age unknown. The deceased is a local homeless man named Toby Chambers. His son runs a hardware store. His wife ran away years ago. Local police have talked to residents, so we know more about the deceased. For example, that he loved drinking, and by no means was abstinent. Such clues can direct us to things that are worth keeping in mind during the autopsy. Mention the rookie mistake. That's my Orin to set first. Due to the fact that in the process of revealing and securing for rent... Oh, where are the damn gloves? Now we can get to work. We're going to need the camera. It should be here somewhere. Oh, must have left it in one of the drawers.
Let's follow the procedure and prepare photo documentation. We must follow the top-down rule. Luckily, we don't have to take pictures of the clothes this time. We are only focusing on the body. Let's keep in mind it's all about the legibility. Voila! Now we move on to the next step. Trace search. We're, go we're going to need better zoom here. We're, go we're going to need better zoom here. People affected by homelessness most often die from accidents, alcohol abuse, or they freeze to death. Unfortunately, both suicide and homicide are also quite common. don't have to stand close to be able to smell a strong odor of alcohol and other discharges. There's nothing left to say. Old Toby didn't spare himself. Hmm. While taking the photos, some entries that could be potentially lethal caught my attention. Let's take a closer look using the magnifying glass. By the look of his feet, I assume Toby must have worn uncomfortable and dinky shoes for quite a while. However, such wounds have nothing to do with his death. An old wound that hadn't healed properly. It must have been some kind of burn or other injury. Nevertheless, it has nothing to do with the potential cause of death. There are frostbite marks all over the deceased's body although they are most visible on the tips of his fingers. They can be recognized by the very specific color of the skin. However, the hands tell us much more. Hmm, that's something interesting. While making photographic documentation, ecchymosis can be seen on the deceased man's head. The appearance indicates the intravital nature of the wound. We'll come back later to see if everything is alright with the brain. What do we have here? I don't need this tool now. I don't need I don't I don't I don't need this tool now. I don't need this tool now. I don't need this tool. I don't need this. I don't. I don't need this tool. I don't need this tool now. Must have been some kind of burn or other by the look of his feet. It could be f the condition of the. Yeah, the odor. At this point, that's all I can do based on all traces on the body of the deceased. The inside should tell me much. Now let's check the level of muscle tension. This will allow us to establish time of death. Let's raise the deceased's hand. And then let go. The stronger the rigor mortis gets, the greater the resistance from the muscles will be. As you can see, the hand falls loose. The rigor mortis has already subsided. We can then assume that the time of death stated in the files is correct. Let's grab a scalpel. I don't need this tool now.
I don't need I don't need this tool now. I don't need this tool now. I don't You can boldly cut with the scalpel. It won't hurt him no more. We always start with the neck and move down towards the symphysis pubis. The incision should be deep. Next, we separate the skin and prepare to remove the ribs. I don't need this tool now. The adipose tissue has an intense yellow hue. As you probably already guessed, we're going to need the scissors. I don't need this tool now. After removing both cartilage and bone tissues, we are actually interested in two things that you can see at the very first glance. The lack of I don't need this tool now. We can eliminate freezing as the cause of death. The deceased smoked like a chimney. Let's take a closer look. We see widespread black and tarry deposits caused by smoking cigarettes. Despite the tragic condition of the lungs, they are not the cause of death. The deceased smoked like a chimney. Let's take a closer look. We see widespread black and tarry deposits caused by smoking cigarettes. Despite the tragic condition of the lungs, they are not the cause of death. Now we need to go grab the syringe. At this point, we need to test the level of blood alcohol content. We move on to collecting blood from the heart. Five millimeters from the left ventricle should do it. Now, we prick the bladder and draw about 10 milliliters of fluid. We also collect the fluid from the deceased to determine the level of alcohol concentration in the vitro. Keep in mind that you have to set the right time and speed on both knobs before the centrifuge. Our samples may break into pieces due to the centrifugal force if we set up the wrong coordinates. I myself am terrible with numbers because I suffer from dyscalculia, which is why I always keep the appropriate coordinates at hand. Ugh, damn it. If something goes to shit, it's all the way. That's probably the blown fuses again. Hold up. I must have had a flashlight somewhere. Ugh, and I was hoping to clock out early today. What? What was that? 
Where did it go? Yeah, it's definitely the fuses. First, left, next. Voila. Ugh, where's that unbearable noise coming from? Let's see what we've got here. Well, everything is telling us that the BAC, blood alcohol concentration, is high. Hence the smell we're getting from the deceased. Still, to be 100% sure, I have to send the samples to the lab. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment to conduct a detailed analysis here. Now let's take a closer look at the stomach. As expected, the stomach has no major external damage. In this case, further inspection is no use. We must cut him open. That's interesting. In addition, oh, it couldn't have been suffocation, could it? Now we need to focus on the cardiovascular system, especially the heart. We take the organ and look it up and down, carefully. I don't need this. I don't need this tool now. I don't. I don't need this tool now. At first glance, the heart looks fine. The pulmonary trunk and aorta seem to be in good condition. There are no pathological changes that have contributed to our Toby's death. Well, once we've got the body ticked off, we can move on to the head.
Let's take the autopsy saw to cut through the skull to cleave it in two. Remember, the skull. Anyway, we will start dissecting the brain from the occipital lobe. In this way, the brain's dura mater is slowly revealing itself. After the basic examination, we can see that the cerebral gyri in both brain hemispheres are symmetric, and the So far, so good. The hematoma, holding a knife with a long, narrow blade in your dominant hand, cut the cranial nerves on both sides, pulling the brain towards you. Remember, just one small fragment examined under the magnifying glass is enough to dispel or confirm our doubts. We then take the fragment of the brain to the tray, and, literally and fig- Just as I initially sus- We can rule the fatal accident out as well. Same as we did with the stomach. While cutting a small organ, such as the trachea, we must perform a precise incision. To be able to cut with the very tip of the blade, we must hold the knife as if it was a stylus. Ladies and gentlemen, based on the report and preliminary documentation, it is safe to us- And now it's all clear. The death was caused by suffocation. It went quite smoothly today. I'm about to get off. In order to bring the chest of our deceased back to its initial state, at least to a small extent, we, we sewed the deceased using the baseball stitch technique. This stitching method is very strong and quick to do. I should probably get to that. I'm coming, I'm coming. Ugh. This is Dr. Jack Hanman. Please leave a message. Good evening. How are you? How are you? How are you? What the f- is that supposed to be? I'll finish the stitching and I'm getting the fuck out of here. What the fuck?